In 1944, J.D. Salinger published a short story entitled Last Day of the Last Furlow. There is a passage in the story that I have been thinking about for the last 15 years since I first read it. The title tells you all you need to know about the plot. The story takes place just before the protagonist goes overseas to fight in World War II. At some point during the story, the protagonist turns to his father in anger and says, Sometimes you talk about the last war, all you fellows do, as though it had been some kind of rugged, sordid game by which society of your day weeded out the men from the boys. I don't mean to be tiresome, but you men from the last war, you all agree that war is hell. But, I don't know, you all seem to think yourselves a little superior for having been participants in it. It seems to me that men in Germany who were in the last one probably talked the same way, or thought the same way. And when Hitler provoked this one, the younger generation in Germany were ready to prove themselves as good or better than their fathers. I believe in this war, I believe in killing Nazis and fascists, but I believe, as I've never believed in anything else before, that it's the moral duty of all the men who have fought and will fight in this war to keep our mouths shut once it's over, never again to mention it in any way. It's time we let the dead die in vain. It's never worked the other way, God knows. But if we come back, all of us talking, writing, painting, making movies of heroism and cockroaches and foxholes and blood, then future generations will always be doomed to future Hitlers. It's never occurred to boys to have contempt for wars, to point to soldiers' pictures in history books laughing at them. If German boys had learned to be contemptuous of violence, Hitler would have had to take up knitting to keep his ego warm. Why am I reading you this passage? Because for the whole year, I've been baffled by the success of the movie Top Gun Maverick. For the life of mine, I cannot figure out why is it that in the same year that Russia has wreaked havoc across the globe, a movie that glorifies war should become so celebrated. Why is it that in the same year that people decry war like they've never done before, they rush to theaters to watch a film that is all about violence, weapons, and warmongering? I don't even know what to call this. Sheer hypocrisy or cognitive dissonance. I'm sorry, but has humanity been asleep for the past couple of centuries? Have we not learned anything from history? Don't we already know what could happen when we aestheticize violence? What baffles me the most is the fact that this movie is loved not just by ordinary people, but also by movie critics who should know better. In the end, if you boil it down, the movie has resonated with an audience who have become so antagonized against one another that they cannot even name a common enemy. The enemy is vague, the enemy is the neighbor, the enemy is the other. This is perhaps what I find terrifying the most. The movie pumps adrenaline into your bloodstream because you imagine destroying your neighbor as the enemy. And your neighbor, who is also sitting next to you in the movie theater, imagines destroying you as the enemy. The enemy in the movie has been made vague by design to feed off people's hatred of each other. Each person in our society is a paranoid, atomized snowflake who sees their neighbor as the enemy, and the movie has tapped into this antagonism. It speaks to a generation who takes to social media and easily attacks and publicly shames a person whom they've never met before. It speaks to a generation who bully others online with a clear conscience. It speaks to a generation who would refuse to speak to anyone who has a different opinion on anything. And when they decide to speak, they only do so to deride others and show off how they are morally superior to them. To put it concisely, 
It speaks to an audience who have become so fragile and atomized that anything foreign is the enemy. But what about critics? What about those who should know better? In an article published by The New Yorker, Richard Brody partially explains why the film has become so popular with movie critics. We live in an era in which the gap between artistic value and commercial success is widening at an alarming rate. For a long time now, movie theaters have been struggling to survive, and movies are failing to lure people to theaters. In an age when commercial success is increasingly becoming the sole criterion for value, people tend to mistake commercial success for artistic value because it's only the money that speaks. Richard Brody writes, Many of the reviews of Top Gun Maverick have the feel of Stockholm Syndrome. That isn't to doubt their sincerity, but to get to the roots of the feelings sincerely expressed. The excitement at anticipating crowds returning to theaters and possibly keeping some of them in business feels as if it spilled over into assessments of the movie itself. Its potential for enormous box office success was treated like an artistic value. The world of movies is poised to become more like the world of books. The biggest sellers will be distant from the art. I don't have any final thoughts on this one. I don't even know what to do other than to be baffled by our species. I wish it were as easy as hating those who allow history to repeat itself. But doing so would create the same sort of scenario that I've been criticizing for the past five minutes. There is nothing to do other than to express one's thoughts, not in hatred, but in bafflement. Before ending this video, I would like to leave you with a piece of advice. If you decide to watch this film, have a napkin nearby so you could cry for humanity.